Hello again, everyone. This is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com, and I am standing behind what is, in my opinion, the coolest submarine ever envisioned by the human race. This is the Nautilus from Disney's version of the 1954 classic 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. And this is, as you can imagine, a fully functional RC submarine. I would love to share some details with you. Let's take a look. Before we get into this, I'm going to give you just a little bit of the background on this boat because if there are extremely sharp observers amongst your ranks, you'll actually have noticed that years and years ago, this boat was already in one of my videos. So what actually ended up happening is I built this boat for a customer years and years ago, uh, completed it, shipped it and never really heard anything from the customer again. Years later, I was emailed by a group of students who said that they were looking to build a platform for uh, an ROV for a class project. They had a submarine and they wanted to learn a little bit more about it because they found some information of something that looked like it on my YouTube channel. Sure enough, it was actually the Nautilus that you see behind me and their plans were to chop it up into pieces uh, and mount it with the hardware that they needed to complete their project. Uh, as you can imagine, my heart immediately stopped and I forbade them from doing any such thing. As it turns out, the boat was built, shipped to the owner and promptly stored, never taken out of the box. That's craziness. but. It worked out well for me because what I ended up doing is sending these students something that fit perfectly their needs in exchange to get this boat back. And it's been sitting at my house prominently on display in my living room uh, ever since, but I have since finished it back out, trimmed it, and it is back up to full fighting trim once again, and uh, I will be offering this for sale. So. Let's take a look at how this thing is put together and all of the cool features that it has. All right, uh, a little bit of background on the kit that this was built from. This is a custom replicas, 132nd scale Disney Nautilus kit. It's uh, what's known as a generation three boat because it has the revised wheelhouse, the separate breathers and the separate photo etched decking details that you can see right there. These are absolutely gorgeous boats. My most favorite submarine of all time, as many of you know. 66.5 inches in overall length. Um, it's a beautiful size, gives ample room for any conceivable feature that you can think of putting into it. This particular model uh, features full LED lighting, which I will get into in a moment. Uh, in all of the applicable places, there's over 20 uh, LED locations. As you can see, over 16 of them are only just in the salon window areas. And then you've got the alligator eyes up on top of the wheelhouse and, of course, the interior, which is fully detailed out. Um, all of the hatches are functional. Uh, in the front and the uh, back section right there. And uh, the breathers are also posable, so you can uh, see them in the raised position that you see at the beginning of the movie as the Nautilus was taking ballast air in, uh, or in the lowered position, which would be its operational underwater condition. Um, the hull is fully detailed with um, thousands upon thousands of beautiful uh, rivets. I did uh, a complete weathering job on this boat uh, which involved uh, an application of real rust uh, which is why it looks so darn cool. Some pastel weathering uh, can also be seen in there as well. 
Um, going to the drive se section, so this is a four and a quarter inch diameter OTW pump based dive module. Uh, it's brand new, I purchased it uh, just a, a little while ago specifically for this boat, so it's not even the original one, which is itself not used at all. Um, taking a look at it, going from the front forward, there is actually a forward servo output. It's not hooked up for this particular build, but it would be exceptionally easy to install a servo and the linkages so that you could remotely move these breathers uh, up and down. You've got the, uh, the solenoid valve and the main pump for the ballast system, along with the dive controller on the bottom there. We've got our main ballast tank, uh, 10 inches in length, fully baffled. And then we've got our main motor compartment with the uh, optional OTW large drive motor, twin servo outputs, one for rudder and one for pitch control. We've got a six channel receiver on 75 megahertz and uh, an Mtronix sub 10 electronic speed controller with integrated battery eliminator circuit. Uh, the radio is a VEX robotics six channel computerized radio and this model also features a fully remote on off feature um, which means you basically turn the model on and off utilizing this key fob which is pretty darn cool uh, not to mention convenient um, one of the neat things about the way that this model is set up as you can see obviously the main drive battery and the cylinder are not installed in it if you put a small 12 volt battery or 9 volt battery uh, inside and hook it up to the onboard remote switch, uh, you can actually display this model with fully functional LED light that works off of this remote control. And I'll show that to you now, I'll turn it on. There are our LED lights. So now you can really see those interior details of the wheelhouse, the main ship's wheel, the dive levers, and the depth tube, which is uplit with blue LED lights. And then all of the white uh, LED lights around the perimeter of the sub. And one thing that I've added and is a little bit of a point of contention within the Nautilus community is the stern light. Um, it is visible at one scene in the movie, but lots of people argue that it wasn't supposed to be. Um, from a functional RC model perspective, however, Having that there for, uh, for visibility is a very good thing. Uh, and obviously at night, looks pretty damned cool. Uh, last thing to show you is the main drive battery. This is a monstrous nickel metal hydride 12 volt battery. Um, 10 amp hour capacity. So you've got ample juice to run this boat for Basically, as long as you want at the pond, you'll get bored uh, before you run out of juice. One of the cool things about how I set this particular boat up is just how easy it is to get into the boat with no hardware whatsoever. So, getting in access to the interior of the boat is as simple as slipping out the ram and you can see it's got an aluminum shaft on there that goes into an aluminum tube in the body. Simply grab it here and here, lift up, pull forward, and that is it. We've now got full access to the interior of the model. All right, let's take a look at everything that we've got going on inside the boat. You can see we've got some uh, stiffening bulkheads all through here, and these also act as cradles for the watertight cylinder. Um, this is the small battery that I had connected just for the LED lights. I'm going to take that out because we don't need it. Uh, waterproof connector that runs to the LED lights for the upper hull. Uh, and that just pops right off like that. Starting at the front, we've got some, uh, some ballast weights uh, installed there. These were final trim weights that I just added a couple of days ago. This is our remote on off switch and it is completely encapsulated in resin and 100% waterproof. The blue cable there is the antenna for it. Um, this is the lead for the main drive battery and if we show how that goes, basically that aluminum retaining 
clip in the back there shows you where the battery sits and you make up your connection in the front and you've now got your main drive battery mounted underneath the watertight cylinder. Going to the back, a few things of, uh, of note. We can see the rudder control right there. You can see our pitch control. And this is a, a challenge building the Nautilus models in that the, uh, the dive planes in their designed locations, you can see the aft planes here, forward planes here, and trim tabs here. Unfortunately, in practical application, they are next to completely useless. They are too small, placed too close to the center of the boat in order to affect a reasonable pitching moment about the center axis of the boat. And I learned that during the time that I scratch built my very first Nautilus. And so the solution that I came up with was to actually pitch the entire propeller. And uh, as you saw there, basically there's, uh, there's an arm and that prop is gimbaled and there's a universal shaft inside that allows it to spin while it uh, tilts there. Uh, something to note, you can see these retaining collars on that linkage so the prop will never be able to move more than uh, what is adequate for you to get the pitching moment and it'll never impact the hull of the boat either. Uh, and then the last thing that you can see there is the uh, stainless steel drive shaft that drives that rear prop and it spins exceptionally easily as you can see right there, which is what we need. So let's get into uh, installation of the watertight cylinder. Here's a, here's a bit of a glimpse into the upper hull. You can see flotation foam uh, installed in there, all of the brass photo etched plates, the workings for the breathers, and um, interesting, this is the removable floor of the wheelhouse and basically you just remove uh, or back off these two screws and loosen the front one and the entire floor can be removed for uh, maintenance, access, cleaning, whatever needs to happen inside the wheelhouse interior. So just kind of a cool little feature in the inside of the boat. All right, as you can imagine, uh, I also engineer it in such a manner so that the installation and removal of the watertight cylinder is exceptionally easy as well. We've already put the battery in place. I'm gonna make up the connection here. Main drive battery is now connected to the remote on off switch, but no power is flowing through it, so we're safe to continue. I'm gonna take our watertight cylinder, make a note of the forward and back orientation. Obviously the pump compartment goes in the front and the drive compartment goes in the back. What we're gonna do is grab the, uh, the drive shaft. We're gonna slip it into alignment with that uh, rear dog bone. And you can see these brass wheel nuts and they go into two holes. So we're basically going to slip those in place Make sure that our drive shaft is aligned and then push the cylinder back. Once you do that, the whole cylinder basically just drops in place as you just saw. So it is now completely aligned and locked in place so it can't rotate anymore. What we do need to do now is lock the front of it down and we have just a little retaining block. There's a small mark on the front to indicate forward it slips on over top of the forward brass knurled nuts and you just screw down the stainless steel bolt and that retains the forward end of the cylinder. So out of all of this, the only tool that you actually need is uh, an Allen wrench to tighten down that bolt. Now that we're in the back of the boat, you can see that drive shaft is completely installed and aligned. I'm going to grab my pitch linkage and this just slips on over top of the 
little hole in the bottom of the linkages there and you can see both the pitch and rudder linkages are completely adjustable utilizing simple set screws so you can make fine adjustments to the boat. I'm going to do the same thing for the rudder. Now our cylinder is completely installed. The boat is ready to go. The complete amount of time to install or remove the cylinder is probably in the vicinity of 10 to 15 seconds, which is pretty darn cool. The other thing that I want to make note of here in the back is the fact that this entire upper tail section is completely removable. Uh, and that is obviously for access, for maintenance and adjustment of the linkages in the back of the boat. To get this off, again, no tools required. There's two brass pins here and here. You simply grab them, pull them out, on both sides and the entire assembly lifts off. So something else that I like to do, which isn't absolutely imperative, but does make the operational experience a little bit better for you, is the installation of a clear rudder extension on the back of the Nautilus. It does have very good performance as it comes out of the box, so to speak, because of the placement of the rudder directly behind the propeller you get instantaneous control over your yaw anytime you activate your throttle. However, install, uh, installing this clear piece of plastic in the rudder uh, means you've got exceptionally increased control over the yaw of the boat. It makes it a little bit more enjoyable and it tightens up the turning radius of the model. Installation is exceptionally straightforward. You simply Note the direction of the arrow, which indicates up. Slip this piece of acetate into the slot that's been cut into the rudder. Push it in place. And then you use these supplied black 440 threaded set screws. And you screw them into place and basically that retains that piece of acetate so they will never come out again. That's locked in place and we are ready for the pond. The cool thing about this is, as you can see here right now, it is virtually invisible, not only out of the water, but absolutely in the water. Very difficult to see. And of course, for display, it takes just a moment to remove to make a beautiful display model. All right, now that we have everything hooked up, we need to do a bench test to make sure that it's functioning properly before we drop it in the pool. Uh, let's get started here. We'll turn on our transmitter and press the on button on our key fob. All right, heard a little bloop there as it uh, the pump kicks in just momentarily. Let's uh, let's test all of the functions here, shall we? So we'll uh, let's start off with the throttle. You can see that's nice and smooth and forward and reverse. Got our tilting propeller. And we've got our rudder. I'm gonna test our pump here real quick too. Note about this, you do not want to run this dry for very long. There's actually water in there right now from previous testing. Uh, but to, uh, to submerge, I would hit the down button on the back here. Pump kicks in and we should be able to submerge in theory. And that's it. It works. All of the functions uh, are working properly. Um, the last thing that we need to do is connect the uh, LED lighting lead. Well, I'll see if I can try and do this with one hand. And obviously the way that this is uh, rigged up right now the LED lights come on with the main power. So if you want a visual indication as to whether or not the model is on or not, uh, all you need to do is look for the LED lights. 
Well, there you go, everyone. We've gone through the overview of the model. I've showed you how it works, how it goes together, how you prep it for the pool. The only thing left is to put it in the pool and show you how it works, what kind of response you get, what kind of speed it has. I'm sure that's the part you've all been waiting for. everyone that is the end of this overview of a 135th scale Disney Nautilus RC model 66 and a half inches long a monster of an RC submarine and my favorite boat of all time I hope you enjoyed this video again my name is Bob Martin the RC sub guy with the Nautilus drydocks.com thanks for joining me and we will catch you next time.